Hey there, I'm Melissa Batt, the host of Priorities on Purpose, a podcast for overwhelmed direct sellers who want to grow their income, audience, and influence without sacrificing their mental health and main priorities. Whether you're just starting a new adventure or you're 15 years in and have already climbed the ranks, I want to help you have the life and the business of your dreams. Can you see it? Can you feel it? Or maybe you thought you had it and something changed. Whether you have your entire dream mapped out or have completely given up on all the possibilities, I'm here to remind you that God is bigger than the little box we put him in. This side gig is part of his plan. It's not your sole purpose, but it absolutely has purpose. As a Christian life and business coach, I'm here to help you get out of your head and live with intention so you can enjoy what matters most without the guilt. More time to do what you love, more peace, more impact, more money, and opportunities to give to those you wanna help. I promise to be your hype girl, business bestie, and biggest cheerleader as I share proven and simple strategies that will be sure to help you live a fulfilled life with a strong, sustainable business. Are you ready to stop chasing all the shiny things and get laser focused? Put your earbuds in while you're cooking dinner or folding that laundry and let's get to it, friend. This is one time when multitasking is actually going to be beneficial. Hey friends, welcome back to another episode. I'm super excited to let you in behind the scenes again. And in this episode, you're going to hear a little bit of the real talk that happened during the masterclass I did for the Success Lounge called Fake Blockers. I want you to listen in and really ask yourself the hard questions. Is your faith in your relationship with Jesus, where you want it to be? And if not, what can you do about it? The whole episode really was about things that are getting in the way. But in this episode, in the part you're gonna hear, I'm talking a lot about one of the questions I get a lot is like, how do I hear from God? I wanna hear from God the way you hear from God. And where do I start when I decide I wanna read the Bible? And also, Some of the things that I've been talking about recently, I've been talking about since 2020, 2021, breakthrough, revival, getting your crap together so that you can be a kingdom worker and living out the purpose that God has for you. All of that is part of this message that was from the masterclass. And I hope you like it as well as the Success Launch members did. Is your relationship growing? It's not about checking a box. It's about a relationship. Getting away from the rituals and the routines and the traditions to really experience a relationship. There's a huge difference. And, you know, over the last year, I know I've had a lot of people ask me, like, what God to speak to me like he speaks to you. I've never heard God. And I don't know how to describe it because you don't know until you know, and then you know. But I do know that there are a few things that God had showed me over this last year. And that is one, we need to know his voice. There's something in the book of John that talks about, it's a parable, I think, and it's in the book of John, basically calling for his sheep. The sheep know the sound of the shepherd's voice to know that it's him pulling them. And if you don't know the sound of the shepherd's voice, which the shepherd is Jesus, then you need to know his voice. What does it sound like? How do you know if you don't spend any time with him, right? You need to know what his voice sounds like. And the only way you're going to know what his voice sounds like is when you spend time with him, right? And so... In the beginning, it is definitely about the act of obedience, I think. I cannot believe this masterclass is going this direction. Like, I did not see this coming, just so you know. Like, I'm going to talk about faith walkers, and that is it. But I think it's really important to see that you have to pursue. Like, Jesus is there, but you have to pursue him because he's there and you're not going to even recognize it. He's pursuing you all along and you aren't even paying attention. And so to pay attention, you have to be still, you got to be quiet. You got to listen for his voice. The best way to do that is opening your Bible. A lot of people have asked me, 
where do you start? Like, I've always wanted to read my Bible and I just don't understand it. It's like just a whole bunch of words on a page and I lose it. For me, this last year, I have really focused on reading my Bible and getting into the word. And one of my most proudest moments of 2021, because it's one of the habits I really have stuck with. Have I done it every single day? But I have not, like, I'm still doing it. And it's December 22nd, right? I mean, that's a win. That's a win. And in it, though, I started with the book of John. That is where I started this year. At. I asked a friend, I was like, I really want to commit to reading the book, the Bible, like really read it. Where should I start? And she says, start with the book of John. And so anyone that has asked me that and two people has asked me that over the last week, I have said, to start with the book of John. I don't know why, but that's where I started and it worked for me. Start with the book of John. And it's not about sitting for 20 minutes. It's not about sitting for five minutes. You know, some days you're only going to get you know, maybe you'll only get through two sentences, two verses, but think on that. You know, I always had a journal with me so I can kind of journal over it as well. And it's about the obedience. Sometimes you got to do it, even when it looks like you're not going to get anything out of it, because you know, you come with a heart of expectation. And in that expectation is like, I am going to get something out of this whether it's today or tomorrow, like you're going to get something out of it. So to commit to read his word on a regular basis, it's so, so important. John chapter 10, verses two through five, the man who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The watchman opens the gate for him and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all of his own, he goes on ahead of them and his sheep follow him because they know his voice, but they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. Oh, wow. And so then I wrote down, do you know the father's voice? Does he know your name? Will you allow him to lead? Will you follow? Will you be able to tell his voice versus others? When you hear the other's voices, what will you do? Will you listen? Will you dabble? Will you dwell there? Or will you run away from it? And then I also, this all kind of came from the time where, this is actually where this entire check your posture workshop that I'll be doing came from. Because John chapter 8, verse 37 I know you are Abraham's descendants, yet you are ready to kill me because you have no room for my word. We got to make room. How do you make room? You have to get rid of the things that are not serving you and are getting in the way of your relationship with Jesus. So here's the other thing that I had written down. If there isn't room and you're made aware of that fact, You then have two choices, right? You make room or you choose to continue on the path that you were on. You get to choose. That's the gift that God has given us. We get to choose. I know for me personally, I'm making room. I'm making the time. Not because of what I want to get out of it, because of where I know God wants to take me. Rachel, if I spend as much time with God as I do on, yeah. It's true for all of us. So I also want you to know, like, God is preparing each of you. And I know that I know that I know that I know that God is calling you to kingdom work, right? You are to go and make disciples. And that is the great commission that we are all called to do. Go and make disciples. And we're all doing it in different ways. The revival is coming. People are open, like, their ears are open. That's a word God gave me. I think it was earlier this year. Their ears are open. They are ready. Like they are searching. They just need the people that God has called to be obedient. Stop filling their mind with noise and crap and do the work that he has called you to do. In the book of John, it also says how don't, it says something like don't pray for this person, like 
now this is, it's been a long time since I've read it, but basically what I got out of it is you don't, don't pray for this person to get the help they need. Pray for the workers. The harvest is here. We need more workers. And you each are called to be a worker. And so he wants to use you, but you have to, and you, you know, it's a slippery slope because then you can get into, you know, you have to be really careful because then you can be so into doing the kingdom work that you, that it's the, the kingdom work and try to do it on your own. And you can't do it on your own. You have to be connected to the source. So I really want to challenge you. And this is what I've written down. This is from February 18th of this year. I'm making room. I'm making time. I already said that part. So I want to challenge you guys to slow it down, rest. Know this is kingdom work, which means you don't lead. It doesn't mean, it means I don't lead. He leads and you learn to follow. Can you do it? Yes, you can. Baby steps, one step at a time. And then I also wrote down here because I know that I know that I know breakthrough is coming. Breakthrough is here. Like right now, breakthrough is here. Do not get distracted because I don't want you to miss this. And we like people, you know, there are so many things that people are running to, looking for, like they're searching for anything to comfort them or to, you know, like if you think it, like this world is a mess and I'm not going to get into like politics or, or anything, but I will call out the new age stuff, you know, the psychics, like there's all kinds of, I mean, it blew my mind when I started coaching some of the coaching groups that I am in or was in where like there are coaches teaching all kinds of crazy stuff, you know, energy and mother earth person, you know, I was like, what, what even is this? You know, and, and people are paying thousands upon thousands of dollars because they're just looking for something or someone to help them. And we know Jesus is the answer. So today I want to challenge you to really get things in order. And know that other people, you know, sometimes I know for me, I can't like doing it for myself is not going to get me to let's not put in a lighter, a lighter, a fire under my butt. But knowing that other people like need me, that lights a fire under me. So whatever you need to light that fire, to be like, get your crap together. I'm, challenging you and i don't know i know i've read this before to you guys but i wanted to do it again but i don't know where it's at and i didn't think about it at this time there is a message that i have shared and i'm pretty sure it might even be in the stuck to unstoppable workshop which by the way is going to be an opt-in everyone's going to be getting access to that at any time. So instead of me doing it over and over and over and over, it's going to live on my website and they can go to it at any time. And then there's a couple bonuses. And I'm pretty sure in one of those days, I talk about this word that God had given me where they get yourself together. Like literally that was the word, like get it together. People are desperate. They're, you know, think about like the suicide, the mental health, struggles that people have right now, they are chasing comfort in all the wrong places. And it's up to us to do the work that God has called us to do, because that is what we're here on this planet for, right? That's why we're here. We are here and called to to do this work and share him with others. So How can you love on people? And that's a whole nother masterclass on, you know, how to do that. But it starts with you knowing God's word and being plugged into the source. And to do that, you've got to remove the idols. You've got to make room. And so some other face blockers, 
insecurities, having the wrong focus, victim mindset, shame, fear, comparison. Your struggle can be a faith blocker. And I really want you to flip the script on that and see it as your sacrifice. Surrender that to God and watch him use it. Your struggle is your sacrifice. So instead of holding on to it with closed fence, like for poor me, my life's this awful or this happened to me or whatever, I really want to challenge you to let go and let that be your sacrifice, whatever it is, whether it's the insecurities or whether it's your past and things that you've done or mistakes that you have made, give that to God and watch him use it because he will. I think I should probably pray. Feels like a good time to pray. Dear Jesus, thank you, Lord, for for just helping me be obedient and show up to do this masterclass, which is probably the hardest masterclass I have ever taught. I pray for those who will hear this message. I pray that you will soften their hearts, Lord, so they don't see it as what they can do and what they can't do, but instead they see it as an opportunity to grow closer to you. Sometimes it's, you know, it's okay to be on social media. It's okay to shop. It's not that it's not okay, but anything that is getting in the way of the relationship we have with you, we have to make sure that we, that we are coming to you for the comfort. You can comfort us like nobody else can comfort us. Numbing out, we know, is not the answer. You want to heal us. You want to restore us. You want to renew us. And the only way we can do that is to turn to you instead of all the other things when we're hurting or when we're broken or when we're sad or when we're happy, that we can turn to you instead. And so I pray, Lord, that you just work in the hearts of all of those who will hear this message. Let your words come into their hearts, Lord, and anything that I butchered and messed up that they will forget. Would you say my break? Amen. Hey, friend, that's it for this episode. If you found value, I would love it if you could take a couple of seconds and leave me a quick review. While it may seem super simple, it is so beneficial and gives me the opportunity to help more women. Also, take a screenshot and share it on social media with your biggest aha today. Don't forget to tag me at Melissa Bad Official so we can connect. Thank you so much for listening. And until next time, friend, keep walking it out one baby step at a time because God's got you.